the margin for error here is really high risk. I could hit a $2 million car. So I get a phone call that says, do you want to be in a rap video? And it didn't take me long to say, of course, I want to be in a rap video. And this is in Los Angeles. I spend a lot of time in, in LA to film our content. It's sunny, it's beautiful, it makes people feel good. I love palm trees, other people love palm trees. You just have access to things like, do you want to be in a rap video? I don't know why I don't question half the time when I get offered opportunities, who is it, where is it, what do you want me to do? I just thought they want, they want to use your car in the background and maybe they'll have you do some of your donuts, stunt driving stuff. I just said, yeah, sure, that'd be great. Send me the location. So we show up and it's this very, what look, appears to be industrial, but not a good neighborhood. And I'm thinking, am I even in the right place? And if I'm not, I need to get out of here right away because someone's gonna run up to me with a gun, tell me to get out of my car and steal my Lamborghini. Thankfully, I was in the right location. They had rented this warehouse to shoot this set this for the, for the rap video. And I'm picturing like, I don't know, like 50 Cent, you know, uh, Drake, some big label rapper. And I pull in and it ends up turning out to be a rap video for the YouTube star, Jake Paul. And I was still like, well, this is really cool. Uh, you know, I can relate. I have a YouTube channel that's growing quite well. Maybe hanging around this young man, I can see how he operates. I can learn a thing or two because he's very, very successful. He's in the 17 million plus subscriber range and he does hundreds of millions of views and he makes a significant amount of money. I believe at 21 years old, which was listed, he, this guy was making like $12 million a year. So I thought he knew something I didn't know. This would be perfect opportunity and a lot of fun. We go in and they have a whole bunch of cars lined up and they're kind of shooting a bunch of you know, previous scenes and we just stand on the side and wait for our turn until we get summoned to do whatever it is we were asked to do. And it's not long after, about an hour goes by, um, he comes over and he says, hello. He says, thank you for coming. I'm really excited to have you guys. Let me know what you would like to do. If you'd like to participate in the background of the video or dance or anything like that, you're more than welcome to. And I thought, you know, I'm awful at dancing, but at least I can move to the beat. And we had some fun for about an hour until it got to the point where he goes, okay, so you can do drifting in your Lamborghini or donuts. Could you drift around another car if I stood on top of it? I said, yeah, most likely I could. Looks like there's enough room in here. There's definitely in a, in a warehouse, there are these steel uh, fixtures that are the supports, the foundation of the building, if you will, that are definitely immovable objects that you would definitely not want to hit. But I kind of eyed it up and thought, yeah, you put a car there. I could slide it around the car. It's going to be close, but it's not, it's not going to be undoable. Then they raise the bar. They go, well, we also want to put some cars kind of in the background in a semicircle. Would you be cool with that? And I said, yeah, yeah, I think I could do that, but they need to be at this distance. And we're, we're kind of figuring it all out. This is all real loose. I'm just doing this by eye and feel. I don't have a measuring tape out and nothing's really scientific. Then they go, is that car right there going to be a problem? That one sitting right there? And I said, the $2 million all carbon fiber Mansory Bugatti Veyron that belongs to my buddy? They said, yeah. And I didn't really want to be the guy in front of, there's about a hundred people on this production set, you know, about 55 people who worked with the Jake Paul crew and his, you know, all those people. And then a bunch of other people helping out. And they're all standing there looking at me while he's asking me this question. I didn't want to be like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't feel comfortable doing that. So I just went with, yeah, no problem. I got this. And so I'm starting to actually get a little nervous because this is a really big deal. I'm feeling confident, but like the margin for error here is really high risk. I could hit a $2 million car. I could hit another, my other friend's Lamborghini, which is what they chose for him to stand on top of, my friend Alex Choi's car. And then, you know, if I hit the car, what happens if I knock this guy over? He's high profile, you know what I mean? And I just kind of, I kind of went with it. And we made sure everybody was standing back. So at, at least 
I wasn't going to hit anybody else. And they go, action. And the first couple of runs I go to take, we're in a warehouse with polished concrete that is not cleaned and there's dust all over it. And it's very, very slippery. And I get about a halfway drift and I lose it. And the car spins out. It's not a big deal, low speeds. So I say, sorry, you know, like, give me a moment, just gonna get like the feel of the angle and we'll get it all down. And I go for a second run and I do a full drift around it. But as I do the first run, every time I go around, the exhaust is basically clearing all that dust off the surface because it's pushing it all off. And the tires as they're spinning is putting just a little bit of rubber down on top of that concrete, which is creating a little more grip. And I do a second circle around the car and I'm noticing two things. I'm having to really make sure that my angle is on point on the same line, because if not, it gets really slippery and I'm starting to go a lot faster or essentially like I'm getting really close to the Bugatti or some of the other cars. And I was just really concerned that obviously I don't wanna hit the Bugatti. If I'm gonna hit anything, I gotta make sure that I lose control past the Bugatti and spin out and just hit like the BMW M4. So we're going and it, it, I don't know how many of these laps these guys want me to do. They don't say when I'm gonna stop. So I ended up doing like six drifting laps around a Lamborghini with Jake Paul like, you know, wrapping on top of this Lamborghini that my friend owns. And every lap, I'm going about five miles an hour faster. So multiply that by six laps. I start going about 30 miles an hour in a fairly slow drift. All of a sudden, I'm doing 60. And I'm, I'm actually moving pretty quick. And as I'm moving, I'm also having to compensate for the angle at which I'm coming between that Bugatti and that Lamborghini. And I'm looking at that, like I'm just hyper-focused on that. And I don't notice off to the right between two of those immovable beam structures for the, for the warehouse, there is this other kind of prop that is made out of a metal frame and some like tin roofing that has graffiti all over it. So it's, a, it's just a prop. It's like an, a background kind of make the set look cool that is actually sitting about two and a half feet further out from the posts I was eyeballing to my right. And I had just drifted about six feet outside of the line I was taking so that I could hit the angle between the Bugatti and the Lamborghini without hitting anything. I drifted outside of that line and the very back of my car, ever the actual quarter panel ever so lightly grazed that um, prop, which was made out of steel. And right after that is my wing, this big, huge chassis mounted wing, which I thought was really cool, makes the car look really unique, ends up completely smashing into the side of this prop. Luckily not hitting the prop and moving it and knocking it over onto anybody because there were people standing around it, but it just demolishes the wing. It's all made of carbon fiber and aluminum and it just buckled and ended up looking like metal was bent and everybody in the room just went dead silent. I came to a stop and I thought in that moment, I thought I've been in this situation before, I've wrecked stuff on this car before, I've made mistakes. Just get out and own it and laugh and no one's hurt, make sure no one's hurt. And I got out and I was like, everybody okay? And everybody was like, yeah, we're all, we're all okay, are you okay? And I was like, just a car and Jake Paul, I'm pretty sure his line was, you know, his, his rap video title was Randy Savage. So he comes running over and he goes, Randy Savage, we broke a Lamborghini. <laughs> and sure enough, we, we definitely de demolished the rear wing of that car into pieces. And uh, yeah, you know, about a month later, we had another one fabricated at the cost of $2,500. And if you had never seen that video, you would, you would have never been the wiser. We'd like to thank Vincero Watches for supporting VinWiki this month. Vincero makes bold, stylish, and well-priced watches out of exceptional materials, and there's a link in the description below for a discount. So check out their website and find the watch that helps make the statement that you want the world to see.